Hello everyone, welcome to ACCA taxation exams brought to you by accountancytube.com. We have recently finished our income tax and as I told you that we will spend a lot of time studying income tax. Reason we spend a lot of time studying income tax is because more time we spend on income tax, less time we have to spend on the other aspects. And uh, you know the major chunk of the P6 syllabus is income tax and corporation tax. So if we spend more time studying income tax, we have to spend less time spend, uh, studying the corporation tax, all right? So we'll study the corporation tax later on. For now, we are looking at capital gains tax. That is very, very important area of P6 exam, uh, although very, very least complicated as well. It's easy. So whenever we sell an asset as not as part of my business, when I'm selling an asset as part of my business, that will go into trading income. So if I sell my asset which I use, say for example if I have a piece of land, if I have a building, if I sell that, now it depends on how much I have purchased it for. If I have purchased it, uh, you know, I mean the chances are I've, I will have purchased it at a least amount so I will be selling it at profit. Now in capital gains we, uh, we call the profit as gain. So whenever I have, I am selling something more than what I have purchased it for, that is a gain, that is a capital gain, all right? Likewise, if I'm selling it at a loss, that will be capital loss, it will be a capital loss or the capital gain, right? So how do we do it? So first of all, we'll take the sales price of the asset, uh, then we'll deduct the cost out of that. But if we look at the detailed calculation, how do we actually calculate it, we will see in a minute from the lecture notes. Now there is a annual exemption as well, like there was a personal allowance in income tax, so the, something called annual exemption is available in our capital gains tax. So for every individual in the UK, uh, there will be annual exempt amount of capital gains tax, which is 11,300 for our current tax year. Now that is separate on top of what we get as personal allowance. So we will get personal allowance and we will get the capital allowance, uh, you know, the capital, uh, uh, capital gains tax annual exempt amount as well. So this 11,300 for capital gains tax purposes only and that personal allowance is only for income tax purposes. All right, so we'll take sales, then we'll deduct the cost out of that. Whatever the chargeable gain is, uh, you know, the, we will deduct the, uh, you know, the uh, annual exempt amount, which is 11,300 of that. And then we'll charge the uh, tax uh, rate uh, of the capital gains tax. Now there are three kinds of rates. Okay, one is on the residential property. So if you have a residential property, then that will be rate of uh, the residential property will be different. Uh, say, for example, if uh, you are qualifying for entrepreneurial relief, now that is an exemption, that is a reduced rate. So if you fulfill that criteria to apply for the entrepreneurial relief, if you fulfill the criteria of entrepreneurial relief, then you will be paying tax at the rate of 10%. Now, if 10% does not apply and the residential property does not apply as well, then that will be a separate rate of 20%, right? So that is, the, them are the different rates of capital gains tax. We will see that in the later as well, uh, when we move to our lecture notes. Now, if, if, you, if you could please uh, open up your lecture notes. Uh, now, this lecture I've again made exactly the same for our F6 and P6 purposes. I'm using my F6 notes. We will do a couple of questions as well. So we'll, we will be studying one topic, then we will be doing the question from the exam kit, and then we will be studying another topic and we'll be doing another question from the exam kit. In this video lecture, as I said, I'm using F6 notes and I will be using F6 exam kit of BBP. Now for P6 students, exactly the same material is given to you in your P6 notes. Although you will not have the F6 exam kit, but doesn't matter you will have P6 exam kit and we will do additional questions of P6 as well. But it is just a revision of your earlier knowledge if you have studied F6 uh, or if you haven't studied F6 then still it is a revision, it's a basic knowledge. All right, so if you could please open up your lecture notes of uh, ACCA F6 taxation please. Now if you come to uh, you know the capital gain section where the page number 31 it is. Yep, 31. Now on page number 31, if you move, uh, let me also move to page number 31. That is capital gains tax, if you see uh, chapter number 14, 15 and 16. Now it says basic calculation. First of all, what we take is we take the sales, 
whatever we've sold it for, then we deduct the incidental cost of sales, then we deduct the cost and then deduct enhancement expenditure. Finally, it will be either capital gain or it will be a loss. Uh, now where it says, it, it explains what, what does the sales mean, what does the incidental cost of sales mean and what does the cost mean. So it will explain all of these things just beneath that. Right? Now if we just move uh, beneath that, uh, it says sales. Now what is sales? Uh, it includes sales proceeds of uh, assets sold if the sale is given as gift or sold to a connected person uh, at less than the market value then the market value of the asset will be used as sales proceeds for calculation purposes normally whatever I'm selling the asset for will take that amount as sales proceeds but say, say for example if I have gifted that asset so of course if I've gifted that asset I will not have any sales proceeds I will not have any money coming in so in that case, I will take the market value as sales proceeds, although I haven't actually received anything. But in the market, uh, in the sales proceeds space, I will write it, write down the market value. All right. Likewise, say for example, if you have given your asset to your to your uh, uh, one of the family members, so when you are giving the asset to your family member, you will be giving them at reduced rate than market value. In that case as well, you will take the sales proceeds as the market value. Right. Then after that, it says incidental cost of sales. There are selling costs include. Uh, these are these are the selling costs. So there are not there are. It, it is these are. These are selling costs, including legal cost, commission paid, agency fee, and advertisement. So these are the, all the costs which are incurred to sell the asset. So we'll deduct them them costs out of that. Then costs include the uh, purchase cost of the assets. So whatever we have purchased the asset for. Then it says the uh, enhancement expenditure, it is a capital cost incurred in the asset after we have purchased it, uh, due to which the value of the asset may be uh, you know, increased or enhanced. So if I have purchased some asset, then I have done some expenditure on that to make it uh, more marketable so that its value will be increased. So that is called uh, enhancement expenditure and that will also be deducted, right? So if we look at again, uh, how do we calculate, we'll take sales, Incidental cost of sales, cost and enhancement expenditure will be deducted and the remaining amount is going to be the capital gain or capital loss. Now if we go to the next page which is page number 32 it says uh, capital gains tax for individuals. Please remember capital gains tax for individuals and for companies is separate. Uh, only individuals will get the 11,300 annual exempt amount. Please make sure. Uh, you write it down. Annual exemption of 11,300 is only available to individuals, not to companies. Right, then it says a complete format without entrepreneur's relief. As I said, there will be certain conditions. And uh, so if I'm selling some asset uh, and if I'm fulfilling some criteria, then that asset, that specific asset, uh, that specific sale will qualify for entrepreneur relief. Now, whatever gain I have on that asset, uh, that will be uh, under cap entrepreneur relief and uh, we will pay tax at the rate of 10%. We will pay capital gains tax at the rate of 10%. Now this pro forma which is given uh, us below, uh, this is without entrepreneur relief. So depending on there is no asset which qualifies for entrepreneur relief, we will make our uh, in the capital gains tax pro forma like that. Now first of all there is one asset, so we will list down one asset. Asset A, then we'll take sales, incidental cost of sales, cost and enhancement expenditure are deducted and that remaining amount is going to be our gain. And then it's asset B is uh, qualifying for entrepreneur relief. Now this asset B is the one which qualifies for entrepreneur relief. The previous one was not qualifying for entrepreneur relief. Now this asset is qualifying for entrepreneur relief. Now under the asset A, what we do is under asset A, we will list down all the assets which does not qualify for entrepreneur relief. And in the asset B, we will list down all the assets which does qualify for entrepreneur relief. So we'll keep both of them assets separately because there is a different rate of tax. All right. So we'll take sales again, incidental cost of sale, cost and enhancement is deducted and the remaining amount is going to be our gain. Right, and we will uh, we will keep these gains separately. All right, then in the part uh, in the in the assets uh, C it says capital loss. Uh, so, sorry, in the current year loss. So it says that we have sold uh, we have sold an asset on a loss. So we have sold then uh, we deducted the incidental cost of sales, cost and enhancement expenditure, and the remaining amount is going to be our loss. 
All right. Now this loss, uh, it is a current year loss, so it will be a capital loss. So capital loss is always set off against the capital gains. All right. Then it says a capital loss uh, brought forward. So we will deduct that that loss out of uh, against the other uh, capital gains. So if any loss is still left, uh, I mean, if, if there is any gain still left, of course there will be more gain as well then we will bring the capital loss brought forward as well so the capital loss which is not used in current year we can carry it forward in the next year so we will use it against the next year's capital gains however we will only use it up until the point uh, of annual exempt amount so we won't use the annual exempt amount and uh, so we will leave the annual exempt amount all right so it says the uh, capital loss is brought forward up the uh, up to the amount uh, that annual exempt remains uh, annual exemption remains so we'll deduct the capital loss brought forward uh, out of that and uh, up to the amount that annual exemption amount remains so we will leave the annual exempt amount all right so if i have any unused capital loss i can brought uh, i can uh, carry it forward to the next period but in the next period i will use it up till uh, up to the amount of annual exempt amount uh, so annual exempt amount will be set off against the annual exemption so we won't use it against the and uh, against the capital losses all right and the, uh, then beneath that it says that then uh, chargeable gain whatever the chargeable gain is then we will deduct the annual exempt amount out of that which is uh, 11300 for our current tax year then uh, remaining amount is taxable gain now gain uh, capital gains tax cgt which is uh, rates are different so unused remaining starting rate bands so uh, up until the starting rate band the rate will be 10 percent uh, and uh, you know the basic rate band it will be 10 percent as well and for higher rate band it will be 20 percent and additional rate band it's 20 percent as well right now on the next page if we come on page number 33 now ne next page says capital gains tax payable by individuals now first the income tax bands are used to calculate the income tax so the bands are exactly the same which we have studied in our income tax so up until 30 33 500 it's 20 percent or whatever so them bands will be given to you in the in the exam exam paper so them bands are exactly the same for income tax so we will use them bands first against income tax then any, and then any remaining bands will be used against the capital gains tax uh, in order to determine the tax rate of course so first income tax bands are used to calculate the income tax any unused bands are used to calculate capital gains tax capital gains tax is 10 percent up to the basic rate band 20 percent if it exceeds if it exceeds the basic rate band and then it says that cgt is payable by 31st january after the tax year so for our current tax year 17 18 it is uh, uh, for our current tax year which will end on 18th of uh, 5th of april 2018 so the next uh, 31st january will be 31st of january 2019 right now we have seen the capital losses you know you know on the previous page now i would again encourage you to see this this page page number 32 just see it carefully because we are going to do a question on that so first what we do is well, uh, you know, the main thing is that we will keep, uh, you know, the assets qualifying for entrepreneurial relief and assets not qualifying for uh, entrepreneurial relief separately. And also, uh, you know, the uh, assets which are for residential properties, assets qualified for residential property will be kept separately as well because uh, tax rate on that is 18% uh, for the basic rate band and for higher rate band it is 28%. So we'll keep them separate as well. Another thing is that how would we uh, use the loss? So we will use the capital loss against the current year capital gains, if there are any, and then any remaining, uh, you know, we will carry forward the previous loss, uh, you know, the previous uh, loss which which was unused in the previous year. So we will use that to use against current year's gain if there are any, and uh, whatever the remaining capital losses, we will carry it forward in the future year. And please remember, uh, you know, the loss brought forward will only be used up until the amount of annual exempt amount. So annual exempt amount, we will leave that to set off against the annual exempt amount itself. All right. So we will not be using it against the, and we will not be using it against the uh, losses. Uh, all right. So let's do this uh, question, please. If you could please open up your BPP exam kit. Uh, so the losses question is question number 122. 
122 uh, is a question number. So if you could open that quest question, please. Question number 122 of BPP exam kit. It is relevant to losses. So there is question number 122 of your BPP exam kit of F6. Now, if you are a P6 student, I, I know that uh, you will not have this question uh, because you do not have this exam kit, but I have uh, already shared the question with you through the screen share option, so I hope uh, that you can see as well. So just pause the video and try to resolve this question, to try to solve this question, please. Uh, it's uh, relevant to the capital losses. Now it says that Jams has following gains and losses arising from disposal of chargeable gains. Uh, in 15, 16 tax year, gains and losses are given, then 16, 17, and 17, 18. In the requirement, it says that uh, the allowable loss carried forward to 2018 19 will be. So it says that how much, will, uh, how much will be allowable loss carried forward in tax year 18 19. So we'll have to start from the tax year 15 16 when there was a, a profit of 2000 pounds and the loss was 14,000 pounds. So if we set off, uh, if we reduce our capital gains uh, to zero, the remaining, uh, you know, the capital loss will be 12,000 12, pounds. So if we set it off, it will be 12,000 pounds capital loss in the tax year 15, 16. Now this 12,000 pounds capital loss will be brought forward. It will be carried forward, uh, I mean, it will be carried forward in the next year, 16, 17. In the 16, 17, the situation is 4,000 was a gain and 12, 2,000 was a loss. So the net gain is 2,000 pounds. However, we cannot use the brought forward capital loss because uh, this 2,000 pounds remaining net gain, this will be covered by the annual exempt amount anyway. All right. So as I said to you earlier as well, that although we can use the brought forward capital loss, but we will only be used, uh, we will only be using it up until the amount of annual exempt amount, all right, in excess of annual exempt amount, because the annual exempt uh, gain up to the annual exempt amount will be covered by the annual exempt amount anyway, all right? So uh, the capital loss brought forward will remain twelve thousand pounds for our uh, for our tax year seventeen eighteen. Now in the 17-18 tax year, the brought forward is 12,000 pounds, same. Now in the 17-18, the situation is 13,900 is our capital gain and 2,000 is our capital loss. So the net amount is 11,900 of capital gain, capital gain of 11,900. Now out of 11,900, 11,300 will be covered by the annual exempt amount. Remaining 600 will be used from the, will be used against the capital loss brought forward. So if we use 600 against the re, uh, remaining capital loss brought forward, uh, remaining, uh, you know, the capital loss brought forward was 12,000 pounds. If we use 600 against that, uh, then the remaining capital loss brought forward would be 11,400. So that would be 11,400 is the answer for this question, uh, 122. Right? Now, if you could uh, please move to your lecture notes again. Uh, we have done the, uh, you know, the capital loss question. I hope that you have understood it. Uh, if you come to question number, uh, you know, the page number 33 of your lecture notes, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now it says, the ca uh, you know, the exempt assets. Exempt assets. The sale of following asset is exempt from capital gains tax. Now these are the assets which will be exempt. So the cars, and if you have invested in the individual savings accounts, which are the ISAs, national savings certificates, gilt uh, as securities, these are government securities, and then qualifying corporate bonds. So all of these are exempt for capital gains tax purposes. If you see any of these in the question, it will be exempt. Right? Now we are going to do another question. Uh, if you could please open your BPP exam kit and come to the, uh, come to the question number 119, please. Question number 119. Let me also share the question with you through the screen share option. Question number 119 of BBB exam kit, F6 exam kit. Now in the question it says, uh, let me also open the question. Which two of the following are exempt assets for CGT purposes? Which two are exempt? We have just seen the exempt list. So first of all it says vintage uh, Rolls Royce motor car with worth 30,000 pounds. We know that motor cars are exempt. Painting worth twenty thousand pounds, not exempt. Shares held in individual savings account ISA, this is also exempt. Shop used by a sole trader in his business, not exempt. So, uh, first one and the third one is exempt, right? So the cars are exempt and uh, individual savings accounts is also exempt. 
coming back to our lecture notes next topic is uh, entrepreneurs relief now <clears throat> entrepreneur relief will be available if I am doing a business I have started my business it was a small shop uh, and then I was uh, doing trade on that uh, I have been trading for one year now I was doing quite well after one year I needed some money and I thought I will sell this business now I have been trading for one year then I thought anybody want to buy this business then one guy came and said I want to buy that business but I will keep running this business I want it as it is with all the assets in this shop and everything I said that's fine so I've sold that business to him so I had the business which I was using for one year I have sold that business to an individual as a going concern so it will be running as it is if I do that then whatever gain I make on that sale that will be uh, up to, uh, that will be eligible for entrepreneurs relief now in the second scenario say for example if we just rewind this cassette if we just rewind this video so there is another scenario I was doing my business and I was quite well I have been trading for one year then after one year I thought anybody want to buy this business then one guy came he said I want to buy the business but I am not interested in running the business but I can buy your laptop I can buy that asset I can buy this, uh, buy this asset as well so he was interested in buying few assets of my business then I said that's fine so I've sold the assets of my business right now in that case in that case as well uh, you know the, that uh, you know the, that uh, sales will be eligible for entrepreneurs relief now in the third case say for example if I have sold the shares uh, in a personal company where I own more than 5% and I am an employee as well in the company or a director uh, if I've sold them shares which I've owned for one year then in that case as well uh, you know the entrepreneur relief will be available alright so entrepreneur relief is so so easy so if you just read the uh, lecture notes entrepreneur relief will, uh, is available on gain of the following disposal of whole or part of the business owned at least for one year before disposal no, the business is sold as going concern so that was my first story first scenario second scenario was disposal of one or more assets at the time when the business ceases owned at least for one year before disposal and the asset is sold within three years of trade tra three years uh, of trade secession so even if I have uh, been doing the business for one year then I have ceased trading and then I waited for one more year then someone came and I've sold them some assets that's fine up until three years and the third case it says disposal of shares in personal company where I own 5% and I am officer or employee of the company uh, the company must be trading company shares disposal must be owned for at least one year before disposal and the rate is 10% uh, on that and lifetime and uh, limit is 10 million pounds alright now the new investor relief is also introduced where we have invested shares we have invested some money uh, in the non-listed company so it says that uh, entrepreneur relief has now been extended to external investor trading com uh, in trading companies which are not listed on stock exchange the investor relief has its own t a separate 10 million and it will be a 10 it will be gains will be subject to 10 percent tax all right so it will be <coughs> when we have bought shares uh, on unlisted company uh, which is a trading company and whatever gain I make on that that will be under investors relief and I will be paying tax at the rate of 10% now to qualify for the investor relief share must be uh, newly issued shares by subscription and owned for three years at least uh, after 6th of April 2016 right and uh, after that it says transfer between spouses so if you sell any asset to your wife or your wife sells any asset to you that will be disregarded for capital gains tax purposes so um, uh, when the asset is eventually disposed of to someone however uh, when you dispose of the asset to someone else uh, outside your spouses so my wife gifted me something so for at that point there was there wasn't any capital gain uh, however when I sell that asset to someone else then the original cost of my wife will be taken as as the cost all right so disposal and transfer of assets between spouses give rise to no gain in loss when the asset is eventually disposed of to someone else other than the spouse then the gain is calculated uh, based on the original uh, original cost of the purchase right uh, and after that it says the uh, part disposal now part disposal is very very important um, for for our uh, 
uh, F6 and P6 purposes. So the part disposal it says that uh, if an uh, if an asset is being uh, disposed, uh, say for example if I had an asset and I am selling part of that asset, if I had a piece of land, uh, say for example five uh, acres of land, and I am selling three acres out of that. Uh, then in that case, I am retaining two acres of land. However, I am selling uh, the remaining. <coughs> I am selling three acres of land out of five acres, uh, and I am retaining two acres. In that case, it is a partial disposal of asset, and uh, uh, you know the part disposal of the capital gains tax will apply in that case. All right. Now let me just plug in my charger of my laptop. It's just a. Uh, running out of uh, its charging <laughs> right then <clears throat> so it says that if an asset is uh, in part disposed then allowable cost and enhancement expenditure for the capital gains tax calculation will be calculated as follows so we'll take the actual sales then we'll take the cost or the enhancement expenditure and we'll multiply by a over a plus b now what does a mean a means the market value of the part disposed of and B means market value of the remaining part. Now I want you to note down this formula, please, including uh, what does A mean and B means. Please pause the video and note down this formula because we are going to do a question on that. Uh, so please make sure you note down this formula. So we'll take the sales, then we'll deduct the cost of that. So cost multiplied by A over A plus B. A means market value of the part disposed of, and B means market value of the remaining part. Right? Right then. Now we are. <coughs> so now we are going to do a question on that. Now, if you could open the question number uh, 121, please. Question number 121, please. Uh, I have already shared the question with you through the screen share option. Question number 121. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it says that um, Clive purchased a 10 acres of plot. Uh, a 10 acre plot of land in May 2010 for 80,000 pounds. So that is his cost. He purchased for 80,000 pounds. In January 2018, Clive sold three acres of uh, three acres for 36,000 pounds, with expense uh, with expenses of sale amounting to 1,000 pounds. So he sold for 36,000 pounds and expenses were three, uh, 1,000 pounds, which were uh, needed for sale of that uh, sale, which were needed to make that sales. So first of all, we will take the sales. So sales in this case is uh, 36,000 pounds, less cost of sales, 1,000 pounds. Net sales is 35,000 pounds. Now out of net sales, we'll have to deduct the cost. So we'll take the cost, which is 80,000 pounds, multiplied by A, well, A plus B. Now in this case, A is 36,000 pounds. So 36,000 pounds over 36,000 pounds plus. How much is the remainder part? Cost of the re uh, value of the remainder part is 90,000 pounds. So 36,000 over 36,000 plus 90,000 pounds times uh, 80,000 pounds. So whatever this answer of this question is, so that will be our, uh, you know, the value of the, <coughs> excuse me, that will be the, you know, the chargeable gain. Right? So that's how we'll calculate. Just do it this on, on the calculator, please. <coughs> I hope that you will find the answer. Now, if you could uh, come to your lecture notes again, please. We are uh, on capital gains tax complete format, it says. Now it says uh, capital gains tax individuals complete format. Uh, so first of all, we'll take the assets not qualifying for entrepreneur relief. So sales less incidental cost of sales cost and uh, enhancement expenditure. So whatever the gain is. Then uh, uh, asset qualifying for uh, entrepreneur relief plus the investor's relief. So we'll keep them as uh, keep the message separately and keep the gain separately as well as you can see. Then first of all, we'll deduct the current year loss. Now, whenever we're deducting the current year loss, we will first deduct it against the assets not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief. Reason is asset not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief will be paying tax at a higher rate, and entrepreneurial relief is 10% anyway. It doesn't matter which band you fall in. So first of all. We will uh, deduct the current year loss against the asset qualifying assets not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief, then against the asset qualifying for entrepreneurial relief. So that, as you can see, the preference to loss first against assets not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief, 
and the, then the loss against the assets qualifying for entrepreneur relief. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, and after that, uh, you know, the capital loss brought forward again, capital loss brought forward will be used up to the amount that annual exempt amount remains, and an exemption amount of the current year will remain. So, although we can use the capital loss brought forward, but only up to the amount of annual exempt amount. Again, capital loss brought forward uh, will also be used against the assets not qualifying for entrepreneur relief first, then against the assets qualifying for entrepreneur relief. Right, and then it says that chargeable gain. And uh, then the annual exempt amount will be deducted. And annual exempt amount will be deducted first against the assets not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief, then against the assets qualifying for entrepreneurial relief. And uh, an annual exempt amount for our current tax year is 11,300. And uh, then the, you know, the remaining amount is going to be taxable gain. Now, which will be taxed, assets qualifying for entrepreneurial relief will be at the rate of 10%, doesn't matter if it is basic rate band or higher rate band, and asset not qualifying for tax relief uh, will be at the rate of 10% in the basic rate band and 20% at the higher rate band. Now, this 18% and 28%, this is for residential property, as I said. If uh, you have sold a residential property, uh, then that will be at the 18% or 20, 28%. It will tell you in the question it is a residential property or not. Right then, on the next page, if you come in uh, chattels. Now, chattel is a tangible, movable property. So it must be tangible and it must be movable. So it, it can't be fixed plan and machinery uh, and it can't be uh, goodwill as well. So it must be tangible and it must be movable as well. Wasting chattel is a chattel whose useful life uh, is less than 50 years. So it will be wasting. It is less than 50 years. Our non-wasting chattel is more than 50 years. <coughs> so wasting chattel is a chattel whose useful life is less than 50 years. So sale of wasting chattel will be exempt. Now, a sale of chattel for less than 6,000 pounds and gain arises. Say for example, if you have sold a chattel for less than 6,000 pounds, and there is a gain as well, which means the cost was less than 6,000 pounds. In that case, it will be exempt. Then the second scenario says sale of chattel for less than 6,000 pounds and a loss arises. So if you've sold for less than 6,000 pounds, so say for example, if you sold for 5,000 pounds, but the cost was 7,000 pounds. In that case, loss is calculated assuming that the sale was for 6,000 pounds. Note, the loss cannot be ch changed to gain, but the loss can maximum be reduced to zero. Then the uh, and next scenario says that sale of chattel for more than 6,000 pounds and the gain arises. So if you have uh, sold for more than 6,000 pounds, your sales is more than 6,000 pounds and uh, you have uh, incurred a gain, then we'll take the gross proceeds less 6,000 pounds. So we'll, take the, uh, we'll assume that the cost is 6,000 pounds in this case. Multiply by 5 over 3, so that is the gain restricted to maximum of this amount. Then after that it says that the sale of chattel for more than 6,000 pounds and a loss arises. If you have sold for more than 6,000 pounds but the cost was even more than that, the normal CGT calculations will be applied. And sale of chattel on which the capital allowance has already been claimed. So if you have a chattel on which you have already claimed the capital allowance, in that case uh, you know, the capital gain is zero, which means no gain, no pain. Right? Now let's look at uh, another question again. Now, if you could uh, move to question number 123, please. Question number 100, uh, 123 of your BBP exam kit. Uh, question number 123 of your BBP exam kit. Now, in this, uh, uh, in this case, it says, uh, uh, this, let me open the question as well. Question number 123. Uh, Alan purchased a antique was for 1,500 pounds. In October 2017, she sold the VAS for £7,000. Right, so uh, if sales is more than £6,000, but the, uh, we are making a gain. So if, if the scenario is like that, we have just studied our chattel's rule. It is a chattel, um, and we will take the sale, £7,000, and in the cost, we will uh, assume that cost is £6,000. So 7000 less 6000 is equal to £1,000. Then we will multiply by 5 over 3, so uh, that is the maximum amount of gain. So the answer is going to be 1,667. All right. Now these chattels things, this is re very much relevant for F6 purposes. It's not 
purposes, but it is very important for six purposes. Next thing the intangible assets in your lecture notes, please. Intangible assets. Uh, example include copyrights, registered designs, pay, patents, etc. We I hope that at this level we know what the intangible assets are. When calculating capital gains on sale of such assets, so if we are selling an intangible asset, uh, its depreciated cost, which is the net book value, should be used in capital gains tax calculations instead of the cost. We will, we will not take the cost, we will take the depreciated amount. And the depreciation will be on a straight line basis. Right, so let's move to our exam kit again and let's do another question. Question number 130, please. Question number 130. Now if you move to question number 130 please, it's uh, on uh, 31st of March 2018, Jessica sold a copyright of 28800. So that is sales. A copyright had been purchased on 1st of April 2012 for £21,000 when it had ex uh, unexpired life of uh, 15 years. So in 2012 its unexpired life was 15 years and it, its cost was £21,000. So what is the date now? It is 31st of March 2018. So how many years are already passed? 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Six years has already been gone. Uh, out of uh, 15, if you deduct the six years, the remaining years are nine, nine years. Right, so uh, we'll take uh, 21,000 pounds, which is a cost, which was a cost when we first purchased. Uh, and then we will divide that by 15, so that is depreciation for one year. So then we will uh, multiply, by, uh, multiply by six, that will be depreciation for six years. So that amount, uh, depreciation of six years, will be deducted out of the 21,000 uh, pounds. So the remaining amount is our cost. All right. Now that cost will be deducted out of 28,800, and whatever the remaining amount is, that will be our gain. All right. I hope that you understood. So first of all, we'll take the sales, which is 28,800. That is our sales. Then we will deduct the cost. Now cost was 21,000 uh, pounds six years ago. So the depreciation will be on a straight line basis. So 21,000 divided by 15 per year depreciation is whatever it is, 21,000 divided by 15, that is per year depreciation. So for six years depreciation, we will multiply, by, multiply that by six. So that will be six years depreciation. So that six years depreciation will be deducted out of the total cost of 21,000 uh, pounds. That will give us the remaining value, net book value of the goodwill. So that net book value will, value will be deducted out of the sales which will give us the capital gain. Right, coming back to our lecture notes, please. Principal private residence. Now, if say for example, if you had a home, you were using that home, but then you left that home, uh, I mean, we, you, you, you were using that home, then you sold that property, that was your main property, you have been using that property, but then you sold it. Now in that case, uh, what, how would we calculate gain on that property? Now that normal gain will be reduced by some, uh, some amount which is known as principal private residence. So it will be the amount, uh, it will be the period that you have spent in that house, because that was your own house, you have been uh, spending time in that house, more time you spend in that house, you will get the more relief. So it says the gain arising on sale of an individual's own or main private residence is exempt up to, so it is exempt up to that amount. So we'll take the gain multiplied by the period of occupation. Period of occupation means the amount of time which you have spent at that place. Uh, divided by total period of ownership. All right, so that will be exempt up to that amount. So when calculating the period of occupation, when we look at the period of occupation, there are certain rules. Last 18 months are always treated as period of occupation. Last 18 months of ownership will always be treated as occupation. So that will be, uh, that is the rule. Then some period of absence, so if you are absent from your home, some period of absence is also uh, assumed to be uh, occupied, so that is known as deemed occupation, provided that the period of absence was at some time both preceded and followed by the period of actual occupation. So before that period, I know that you have been absent during this period, but before that period and after that period, you have actually lived in that house. Only in that case, this will be assumed as you have lived in that house. All right? So, 
in the question, when we see the question, it will tell us that this property was sold for that much amount. That was a cost. So the net amount is gain. Now that gain will be reduced. That gain will be reduced by the, uh, uh, you know, the principal private residence. Then it, it will tell us the question that this property was purchased in 1990. And from 1990 to 1994, she lived in that house. And then for two years, she did not live in that house and blah, blah, blah. So it will be a story. Right, so if you come to the next page, page number 36, it says period of deemed occupation. So if there are these things given to us in the question, it will be considered that it is a period of occupation. So up to three months, uh, sorry, up to three years of absence for any reason. So if you have been absent from your house, up to three years we can take it as for any reason. So that will be exempt as well. Any period spent abroad for employment. So if you have been abroad for employment, any period of spent abroad will be exempt as well. Uh, up to four years of absence to live uh, elsewhere uh, due to his work, uh, employment or self-employment, that will be also uh, deemed occupation. Right? And after that it says uh, a letting relief. Now the principal private residence, say for example if in that house, that principal private residence, if you have let that house, then there will be further relief as well. Now the principal private residence exemption is extended uh, to gain accruing uh, while the property is let. Now the letting exemption is lower off. Now this let letting exemption will be uh, up to maximum of £40,000. Now it is lower off gain already exempt under PPR which we have already calculated. Uh, gain remaining after PPR uh, which is the letting part of the gain and the £40,000. So the maximum amount is £40,000 in this case. Right, and after that, it says the part of the house uh, used exclusively for business purposes. So, if you have if, if you have the house which you are using for the business purposes only, uh, then the business portion will not be qualified for that. So, if the part of the house for, used for business purposes, then PPR exemption will not be given to the part of the house used for business purposes. So, let's look at another question. Question number one twenty-five, please. I hope that you are tired, but this is our last question, don't worry. So, question number 125 of your BPP exam, kit, please. It says, uh, Angela purchased a house and lived in it for three years. So, she purchased the house and she then lived, it in, the, uh, lived in the house for three years. Alright? So, first three years she lived in the house. So, three years are actual occupation. Uh, anyway, read the requirement first. So in the requirement it says how many years of Angela's 15 years of ownership. So she's telling me that her ownership is 15 years. Out of that 15 years uh, of ownership period of the house, uh, how much will be exempt for the purposes of pri principal private residence relief? So she is saying that how much of the total uh, period of ownership of 15 years, how much of that will be uh, exempt uh, under the principal private residence. So first of all, she purchased the house and lived that lived in that house for three years. So first three years are exempt. So then them are three years. Then after that, the house was then unoccupied for five years because Angela went to work outside the UK. We know that whatever amount of time we have spent outside UK for the work purposes, that will be deemed occupation as well. So first three years and then five years. Total years, eight years. Uh, she then lived in the house for further two years. So eight years plus two years. 10 years. Angela then went to live with her sister and the house was unoccupied for four years. Now we can take three years for any reason at all. So we'll take three years out of that. So three years for any reason, deemed occupation. So 10 years already and then th these three years. So altogether 13 years so far. And after that it says that Angela then lived in the house for last one year of ownership now although she lived in the house for last one year of ownership but last 18 months are exempt anyway so we'll take last 18 months as well so <clears throat> there were 13 years already so last 18 months which is one and a half year so 13 years plus one and a half years is equal to 14 and a half years so answer for this question is 14 and a half years right Right then, so that's it for our, this video lecture. We will continue with our capital gains tax in our next video. And now that was, uh, I think we have done enough questions as well in this part. And uh, with every, almost every topic which we have studied, I've tried to pick a question so that we can do that question as well. So it will help you 
do uh, uh, a practice as well with the with the notes as well. All right, so I will see you in the next video lecture, and we will continue our journey of capital gains tax. Goodbye.